let's take a closer look at how the Avid S1 can help you mix faster and more intuitively. Avid S1 features eight high-resolution motorized faders, providing users with both the feel and precision to master any task from simple instrument balances to more complex dynamic automation moves. Just above the S1 faders sits a row of touch-sensitive encoders, which can be used to control various parameters, starting with panning, sends, EQ, dynamics, and any other types of Avid or third-party plugins. S1 provides large solo and mute switches with embedded LEDs for each channel. Their slim profile makes it easy to isolate and audition specific tracks from your workstation. Prominently displayed on the top row of the S1 sits a group of dedicated function switches used to change the parameter view of the eight channel encoders. You can switch from pan to dynamics, EQ, sends, and more. The high resolution OLED displays provide a ton of useful information to the user, including individual parameter data, channel names, as well as a small channel meter just to the left of each track name. At the very bottom of the surface, we've included eight track color switches. These multifunction buttons help users to better navigate large sessions by presenting the tracks in the very same way you color coded them in your Pro Tools session. These switches also function as modifiers, great for operations such as nulling or defaulting the faders and encoders. In addition, these track color switches are also programmable. You can easily reprogram user one through four switches to control the transport functions. Up at the top, near the function mode switches, we've got dedicated buttons for banking and nudging, which can easily be shifted to jump to the first or last track in your session. If I press a channel's dedicated select switch, we can shift the parameter controls to see EQ. Now all the eight OLEDs and encoders provide control and feedback for the equalizer that I'm accessing. I've got gain, frequency, band enables, as well as Q by shifting frequency. We've also got access to local paging switches for the active function, which allows me to see beyond the first eight encoders of the EQ. For example, if I need to engage a high pass filter or a low pass filter, I can simply page over and quickly roll off some low frequency. If we switch the function view over to Dyn, I've now swapped out the row of horizontal encoders to show me parameters such as threshold, ratio, attack, and release for this FabFilter Pro C2 compressor. To access the sends for the same channel, I can simply press the aux function switch, and while in a global view, I can see send A across all eight channels of my surface. If we press the channel switch while holding down the shift key, it takes me into a channel-centric view, where now I can see the instrument verb, revive, piano verb, and a harmonizer send all for the attention track. Lastly, the pan view allows me to see basic left-right panning for a mono channel, spanning all the way up through multiple pages of parameters for any Dolby Atmos enabled tracks. Just below the select switches on the surface, we have dedicated automation mode cycling. If I pop a few channels into automation touch mode, you can see for each mode, touch, latch, touch, latch, is displayed with abbreviated text on the channel scribble strip. If we change to touch latch mode, for example, it gives me a touch behavior where the faders ramp back based on the auto match value and the encoders are free to stay at place parameters. That same automation mode switch includes an RGB LED to visually describe the state of the automation on the channel. As you can see, I'm actively writing automation so it's flashing red. While in a writable automation mode for these channels, we can change our function view above to sends. Let's say we want to write some dynamic swells into a reverb or a delay. We can pop into channel view dedicating the channels only for the attention track, and then flip those sends from the encoders down to the faders to make it easier to perform high resolution effects automation. Once I'm done, I can exit flip mode and even easily toggle between a channel or a global focus for any of the available function types. I get to decide based on workflow, whether to use encoders or faders to control any type of parameters for the elements within my session.